Affinity photos, brushes can be used in all kinds of ways, but you can also use different sources for them. I'm going to use the spiral brush in this video. So let's just start right at the beginning to create something like this. Well, let's just remove those. And here's the spiral. It's one of those recent tools that's been added to Affinity Photo, really powerful tool. And you can create all kinds of spirals. So you could go for a square design, go for loads of different designs. In this case, I'm just going for linear, but there are other, other options, of course, and you can set different ones there, maybe go with circular. You'll notice also I've got here dots, not a solid stroke. So just go up here and go to the fill, make certain the fill is set to nothing. And also go here and you can set a gradient. Just go to the swatches and select a colorful gradient. Very quick and easy. So you get lots of different colored dots. So how to get the dots? Well, click here, go to say eight point or nine point and zero and 1.9 down the bottom in here, the dash line style. So dash line style, go there and then set them all to the start, start value there. Again, zero and 1.9 or two or something like that to get these lovely dots. And you can of course space a bit more or less so you just increase it. But I think about two, 2.1, perfect reasonable. So you've got this lovely spiral design. Please check out my videos on how to create spiral designs. And of course you can distort this design. It's just a shape that can be modified, squeezed and rotated, whatever. But the key thing is go to layers and go down here to effects. So click there, then go to 3D and set it to about five. Obviously it depends on the size, except the document and those sort of things, but I'm just going for that. It gives a bit of 3D depth. Now I'm not gonna go for any shadow. I just think it makes it look a lot darker. So with this, I can now manipulate this further. I wanna turn it into a brush and you need to rasterize it first. It's just a shape. So go over here to layer, and go down here to rasterize. Deselect that and rasterize. That's become a pixel layer now. And now you can turn that into a brush. You can also, of course, go to layer and use things like new pattern layer from selection. And just use this to create amazing pattern designs. For the brushes though, let's go here and I'm just going to select B, make certain I've got the brush tool, and you can see the brush I'm hoping to achieve to create again. So let's just go to the one that I've actually just created. So deselect that and go down here. And you can see there's the brush to actually create the one from here. As long as it's selected, that's the key thing, it needs to be selected. Go to the brushes, right side menu, and new brush from selection. So new brush from selection, and then you can see it's added there. At the moment, it doesn't look much. So if I just now go over here and I just remove this, let's just remove it and now go press B to get the brush again. And now let's select that one again. And you can see the brush. It's quite good. Just creates lots and lots of dots very quickly. But what you can do, you can just double click and then you can change the spacing. And you can see then, and the great thing about the spiral tool is it does create lots and lots of very thin lines. And that's what I want. Now, of course, you could manipulate these lines a bit more. You could maybe rasterize it and then distort the design. So you could sort of tweak this design. Also, you could set different stroke settings to create different distances. So you get a different set of lines there, but they're all uniform. And you can see that in this, it's just lovely uniform lines are like threads that are just going off that way well what you can then do is go here to dynamics in dynamics you can go for size jitter you can change that tweak that in all kinds of ways you can also go to cyclic that creates some very interesting designs which you can modify just by changing this and you can see as you do that you can tweak it maybe go for something like that or go for one of these standard profiles here all kinds of different designs simply by selecting different profiles and now if I apply it you can see then now because it's so big it makes it a bit hard to see so let's just remove that just over there oh it's quite hard to actually select the panel but I want to move it just a bit out of the way and you can reduce size down I think if it's about 200 you should be able to see the brush and you can see now as you apply it you can see a lovely 
thread light design very rapidly doing that. But also what you can change, which I think creates a nice interesting effect, is the rotation jitter. Now if I apply it like that, it just basically rotates it and it comes again lots of lots of noise. But you can also modify this to use something slightly different. You could go for cyclic and you can see then you've got that sort of effect. And again, click here. You can vary this, go for different settings and create some really weird and wonderful sort of designs like that. But another option is go down here to distance. And now you can see what happens. You've got this lovely design and, and you can then see the effect there. But also, let's just go here to dynamics. Again, go down here and you can modify the side again. Just click here and you can tweak it and you can see as you do that, you create a whole range of different designs, like something like that. And again, you can go for the standard profiles like that. Maybe go with that one. And the, oops, just hit the mic. Now with the distance, you can see now you've got this kind of effect. But also what you can do, you can go here to Hue Jitter. So the Hue Jitter, just drag this down along. And at the moment, it's random. Just creates a random light. So let's just apply it again so you can see it. I think that's a nice little, maybe used for socks or something. You could have a sock design like that, couldn't you? Also go here to cycling. And you can see then you've got this lovely, beautiful rainbow color design, again, which you can modify using those profiles. And you can see as you rapidly maybe do it. And also another thing you can often do is use velocity as well. Velocity is a great one. So you can modify it using velocity. And you can, of course, just go here, maybe use distance for that as well. And that will have an effect. Now, distance is one of those odd ones that seems to not have much of a result. But if you change it, go through different ones, you'll suddenly find that actually if you go for none, the result is different from the distance. So I'm just going to go here to distance, again for this, and apply it again. And you can see then you get a lovely, beautiful design like that very rapidly. Now, if I just now go here to general, just change the size, you can see I can move that and you get like, maybe like a balloon design, obviously with a bit of a sort of these threads, which I think creates a quite an interesting, does look like a bit balloon, doesn't it? Sort of you imagine sort of pulses. Now with distance, you'll notice what's happened. Once it reaches a certain point, it doesn't change. But you've got that initial colours there, and then it will go to there, and that's it. So you could just continue doing that, and it will not change. It just has a subtle, it is a subtle difference, I think, with this distance one. Unfortunately, documentation about distance is minimal, it doesn't really describe much. So it's one of those ones that I think is a great one to explore and discover and just play around with the different settings. But it's not particularly obvious sometimes what the effect of different profiles will have or do. Because of course you can only obviously find the distance once you actually apply it. So again, you can apply this, and again you can see nothing and then suddenly it kicks in and then, and then it's stuck. Now it's actually quite useful for things I find with say mirror effects. So you can use it with say mirror. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna Go over here and just the there, just resize that so it's a bit smaller. But you can still see that sort of balloon like effect. Again, you can tweak it, of course. So we go to dynamics, click here, and just change it. And you can see then you get this sort of like weird sort of ripply effect. And maybe change that. And again, that will create that. And so on, literally thousands of different combinations. Maybe just push that. You can see then it becomes like very odd. Sort of seems to have gaps in it. But again, any point you can always go for these profiles, just try them out. The one I'm going for is the fourth one there. And now let's just close it. Now I'll probably bring it open again, but let's just move this over here. And in this one, simply go to the brush tool again, B, press B at any point, and then you can go here to symmetry. Now let's just try it. Obviously not with 16, I always find it probably better to go with say four initially. And make certain the lock is turned on. What I like to do is go to the center, go to center and then hold shift key down. And then you can see what happens then. It just goes out 
along that line. And you can just go along, just drag this, and then maybe apply it, very touch it just briefly. And I mean, you might decide, you know what, the width is too big, let's just reduce it down a bit. And you can see then, apply it like that. And you get this lovely sort of very unusual sort of design. And again, you can continue it on. Again, hold down the shift. So it's all along that line. And of course, you can, if you want, just go up here and set the symmetry to the max. 16. I don't know why they set it just to 16. Would have been nice if they'd actually gone for 30. Seems to be an arbitrary limit, but unfortunately, that's what it is. And again, you can see then, if you apply it like that, it goes out there. But also, again, you can always hold down the shift. So I'll just drag that out. And you can create some really weird one. And also what you can do, you can go backwards and forwards. So just continue and then just rapidly create something like that. Obviously, you've got the background design, which I have not removed. So you can see that obviously interferes with the symmetry there. But of course, what you can also do is you can always go and apply various filters, blurs, etc. Again, double click there and you can tweak this even more. So you've got here scattering, you could change that maybe scattering to create sort of a fuzziness to that design. And you can also go for scatter. Now I don't particularly like the scatter, but you want to say like a more sketchy design. I think that with that distance, with the scatter, you can also create sort of, you push too far, it obviously just becomes like that. It's not good. But I think that scatter with those sort of the dots creates a very sort of sketchy like feel to it. So again, I'm just going to remove the symmetry now. I don't want that symmetry effect. And also, let's just remove this layer and apply the brush again. You can just see it a bit better. You can see then you get this sketchy effect, sort of like sketchy pencil. So, and again, you can, of course, modify this cycling. I've obviously gone for that one. So click here and you can just tweak it. Maybe go for something like that, little mini pulses like that, or maybe really reduce it down. Just push it down and then apply it again. And you can then see you create a lovely sketchy line like that. And of course, distance as well as rotation, and I can change the distance. Don't have to go with that and go with cyclic. And click there and just tweak the colors there. And But distance is definitely worth exploring. It's one of those features that I must admit, taking a bit of a lot of time to actually get, even under slightly understanding exactly what it does. I'm quite certain I'm, there's a lot more to explore with this. And also, of course, you can modify the other ones again. All these settings, again, change that. Go to general, change blend modes as well. Another great thing, always worth checking. So once you close it, you always go up here, maybe darken instead. You don't have to, of course, apply it like that to create on top of that. Or maybe go with lighten is another option. So lighten and there. Creates a nice smudgy effect, I think, doing that. And something like that. And that's using a spiral design. Now, of course, I've gone for that spiral design. Spiral design, of course, could be distorted, modified. So let's just quickly go and do that. Again, create a spiral, or maybe an even more intense spiral. Don't have to go. So there's a spiral tool. So spiral tool. Let's just create a very quick spiral like that. Still using exactly the same settings. Haven't changed anything. So it's got the eight point there. Don't have to go with eight point. Maybe increase that. Again, you might decide, you know what? Let's just go for different settings here. So you can see then you get a double dot design. But also, number of turns. Just increase it. Maybe really push that. Maybe go for arc angle. Just change all these settings. Different inner radius. Maybe have less in center. Maybe push it out like that to create a more sort of ring, sort of donut-like design. Well, also change the gradient. You don't have to keep the same color gradient. Think exploring it, you might find sort of like this sort of thing. Like there, go with that one. Also go with this one. You get then you get this weird angular effect. Not always good. Or maybe go with this one, the black and white. Or this one and so on. You can see you can create a variety of different ones simply by selecting a different swatch. Obviously depending if you've got obviously those gradients. Also, Again, modify this even more. Maybe got here 1.1. You see I've got 0, 2.1, 0, 1.1. Also maybe modify that again. And you see sometimes you get a certain point. So, and it just looks just right when I do changes. Not always, 
possible, but sometimes you just hit, you think, oh, it's got a lovely curvature to it that's just right. I'm going to go with that. And you can see once you've got that, you've got here layers, do exactly the same as before, effects. Go here in 3D, change the radius. You can make lovely, maybe push it even more, 13, 14. If you go for our shadow, I think it darkens it too much. Or maybe go for Bevan Boss. Maybe give it a little, just setting that to Bevan Boss, just the standard default one. That pillow effect creates a sort of weird sort of jewel-like effect to that design. And again, close. Exactly the same as before. You can then rasterize it. So you need to rasterize it to make it brush. So go to layer and down to rasterize. Deselect that and rasterize. Exactly the same as before. You can then go to brushes, right side menu, and new brush from selection. And then you've got that. And this time it's obviously going to be an orangey one. And again, oop, cancel. Let's just remove that, delete it, double click, and you've got this design. Obviously, a far more complex design. So if you press B, you'll always get this brush back, and that will appear. If you go off and select the move tool, which I often do by accident, it suddenly goes all blank. I don't know why it does that. It would be nice if it didn't. Makes no sense why it just gets rid of it. But you can still modify the size, change the spacing, and again, you can get, see now you've got this really lots and lots of, but you've gone for those two, the two dots instead of just a singular dot. And you can vary it in all kinds of combinations. And you can get, obviously, a different result in that central bit. And again, dynamics, go for size jitter, you can modify that. Go for distance, and the distance one's great for just experimenting. So you can see you get little bumps and lumps there in the design. Maybe push that up, get a bump there. Now you can push it too far, and you notice it goes up the top. Push it too far, you get that like flattened at the top. You end up getting obviously you now just flattens there. You can see a slight flattening. So if you want to keep it like that, more curved, just avoid going crunching up right at the top. So you've got this. And of course, you can also tweak this in the front. You might want it slightly bigger there, or and again, you've got linear. You might want to turn that. You can see what happens if you go for linear. You get a sort of like very lumpy sort of design. So go there. And you can change that, tweak that, and move that there. And exactly the same as before, rotation jitter. You can see, just by rotating, you get obviously just a complete noise effect. But again, go here, side click, side click effect, which you can again apply very quickly. And you can see then you get this lovely curvature. So I'm made up of lots and lots of obviously those dots. Something like that creates a very abstract, really intense design. Sort of very three dimensional design. So just drag that around. Now, you notice one thing I'm doing, I hadn't even noticed, I'm using lighting. So I'm just going to go back to normal. It doesn't have to be light and it could be, be, there's a load more to use as well. Just try them out. And then you can see then you get that effect. Create all kinds of, but exactly the same as before. Hue jitter. Just push that. And you can change that to distance. Exactly the same. Just go distance. Get that lovely effect there. And again, click here. Tweak this. And you can change this back and forth like that, to create all kinds of different designs. And with that side click, again, you might decide to go for a distance instead, so you get that sort of ridge, that ripple all the way through. So it does have an effect, that distance option, which again, of course, you can then modify and tweak using this, and again, try to avoid that square approach at the top, and you can move that around. You can see as you change it, it does definitely have a, quite an impact on the design. So once you've got that, click close. And again, let's just apply it. And you can see then, as you apply it, it will change subtly. And then, of course, once you get to a certain point, it won't change anymore. And you go to blues, and then purples. And then maybe, let's just reduce it down. That's quite a bit, probably a bit too much there. Push it down to 110. And you can see the result there. More like a Paintbrush. And again, exact the same, you can use it with symmetry as well. So again, let's put this to 16 and simply just spread outwards like that. We'll go backwards and forwards and you can see you can create 
a variety of different designs. And of course, you can modify the width. All the other settings can be modified again and again. This one I think is probably better without actually using symmetry. So push it up to there. It looks much nicer, I think, at about 300 or so. And again, double click there. You can tweak it again. Size jitter, just reduce that down or increase that. Go to general, size and close and apply. And it obviously changes more rapidly this time than before. And goes into blues, purples, and of course, at one point, it just won't change after that. And you can see the design get there. So it's a great little feature, distance, definitely one to check out, but also using spiral, because as mentioned, the spiral tool, just go ahead and spiral, you've got lots and lots. So you don't have to just use that, you've got linear ones, you've also got decaying, you've got Fibonacci, You've got plotted, semicircular, counter, and you can see you can create a variety of different designs just using maybe something like that. Or let's just go and select another one, semicircular, to create something like that. And again, tweak all these, change the number of turns, and so on to create very intense designs for this purpose. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.